So this is uh, brought to you by uh, Tactile Medical. And uh, with us uh, for Tactile uh, is uh, uh, Nick Morrissey, who's uh, known him for many years over at uh, Columbia University, he's a vascular surgeon, and also uh, Mark Mellon, who's a vascular surgeon, as well as a um, wound specialist. We just have a couple of questions uh, to ask them about the, uh, the tactile products that they've been uh, using. So, uh, Nick, um, how commonly do you see uh, these types of patients uh, presenting with leg swelling in your vein practice? You know, you have a busy practice at Columbia in New York City. Yeah, um, Steve, um, we did, we actually worked together for a while, and you know what the practice is like there. I think that um, we see a lot of patients referred for swelling of the lower extremity, and I have a pretty diverse practice with a lot of arterial work, aneurysm work, fistula work, but I still think that on average in a given week, I'll see six or seven new patients with leg swelling. Uh, you know, what's been interesting is that the COVID uh, lockdown has produced an interesting phenomenon of there's a decrease in mobility of all patients. Uh, I had someone come in yesterday worried about a DVT who I've been treating for a while, uh, and she had a significant increase in her swelling, and I think we related it back to the fact that she hasn't been able to do the walks that she normally does. And combine that with the fact that we've been shut down for quite some time, uh, we're, see, we're gonna start to see an onslaught of patients uh, with, the, with swelling. And we see them live, and we've also done a fair amount of telehealth with these patients as well. Yeah, yeah. So I know I agree with you. The, the swelling aspect has uh, has increased uh, significantly due to due just to, to immobility. Um, let me ask uh, Mark. Has that been your experience as well in terms of what you're seeing wound patients as well? I am. I'm. Uh, we're very busy in our wound practice and telehealth. It's amazing because we just can't get the good exams we need to with telehealth. And I think to begin with baseline in my 20 plus career, I, I recognize now I vastly underdiagnosed interstitial edema, chronic edema, lymphedema, lipedema, lympholipedema. And from a wound care standpoint, it has a dramatic impact on wound healing rates as well as recidivism rates. And, and I think you bring up a good point. You've been practiced for 20 plus years or whatever, but it does certainly seem more recently, we are all aware in the uh, medical community regarding lymphedema as well as, uh, as flebo lymphedema and how, how the venous side of things and the lymphatic side uh, interact in ways that we always thought they were two uh, separate systems. So Nick, can you give us a little idea over time how the practice has perhaps changed a little bit in managing these people with lymphedema or flebo lymphedema, what, what you've done in the past and, what kind of techniques and technologies you're using now and specifically, you know, regarding the tactile products? Well, I think you um, sort of alluded to it and it, it really comes out of our evolution of understanding of what's happening. And in my mind, I've sort of taken a different approach in terms of what the leg looks like on the inside, as opposed to just static compression, which I think gives you a certain amount of prevention of further leakage. You're not addressing the the fibrosis, the inflammatory changes, and all of the things on the inside that make that leg, that make that tissue not normal, which remains if you just rely on static compression. So I've taken a more aggressive approach uh, to active drainage of the extremity. I will say that my level of frustration and my patient's level of frustration in terms of the treatment options has gone down dramatically since I've been able to use you know, the tactile uh, FlexiTouch system because you know, the first thing that they'll notice is an improvement in how they feel. Uh, not so much how it looks right away, that takes some time, but they definitely notice a change in how they feel. Uh, and there's no question that there's a decrease in their complication rate and an increase in their satisfaction. So, so when, when do you start to consider, you know, instituting, the, say, the, the flexi touches as uh, you, you said, is it somebody, is it someone comes in with, you know, yeah, they've got some early lymphedema, and, or do you wait until it's advanced and then you say, oh, now we need to use it? Yeah, I don't wait till it's far advanced. I try to wait them out in terms of getting a sense of their level of uh, compliance and commitment to actually seeing it through because no matter what we do, they need to be um, committed to long-term uh, chronic care of their condition. So once I get the sense that they are not completely asymptomatic with just static compression, and, uh, and activity, 
then I have a low threshold to try to introduce this because I feel like the sooner we do, the less um, chronic changes take place on the microscopic level, which lead to immune compromise and higher rates of ulceration and cellulitis and hospitalization. So I gauge their commitment and I gauge their enthusiasm. And, and most of the time I've been uh, very successful by doing this. And I try to institute it before it gets too complicated. Yeah, so Mark, let's uh, ask, can you, can you help listen, the people who are uh, listening here, uh, what is the commitment? What kind of commitment does the patient need to do? And, and then what have been your experience with the commitment that the tactile company itself has uh, to these patients uh, when, when they are ordering the Flexi Touch? Well, Nick brings up a really excellent point. We've got to get the patient's uh, mind engaged. And, you know, Tom O'Donnell and a medical student published a JVS article within the past two years that talked about one of the biggest risk factors for not healing is the patient's depression. And I, I think unless you're between the ears engaged, and that's one of the first things I think we have to start with is patient engagement, education, understanding. That takes a really uh, significant team. And so as we build that team, it's certified lymph edema therapist. Uh, we've got to teach them MLD. We've got to teach them complete decongestant physiotherapy. So many of our patients have sarcopenia. So we've got to work on muscle mass building, which contributes directly to lymphatic flow in the lower extremities. If you have no muscle mass and if your lungs don't work well and your chest doesn't work well, you're not going to be able to have good, ultimately receptive decompression and really uh, like a straw, remove that fluid out of the legs and get the lymphangions uh, maximal. So it's really a, an important team approach and, and also our physical medicine rehabilitation physicians, you know, we want to engage them because they've got a long history in helping us to teach us and our local PM and our doctors have been really significant. So I think it really takes a huge team approach to get this done. And uh, once we get the patients engaged, educated, committed daily, they see rapid accelerated changes that's a self-fulfilling um, uh, aspect that I think uh, patients quickly within six to 12 weeks will see significant changes, uh, especially with a flexile, with a tactile flexi touch plus where we're getting really significant receptive decompression and max, uh, maximizing utilization of lymphangion function, which clears the lymphatics. And I think they see a really significant improvement as part of an overall program. And of course, we've still got to use all the standards of care, such as uh, good compression wear, exercise, et cetera. Yeah, no, no. And, and I think you bring up the point. It's while, while Tactile has products that take care of it, it is a team approach. And um, it's all got to be coordinated to get the best out of the patient. You can't just say, here, just put this uh, Flexi Touch on and everything's going to be just fine. Um, but it's, it certainly adds to it. Nick, talk to me uh, a little bit about what length of time, what do you say to the patients? You know, you're gonna you're gonna prescribe this for you. Uh, someone's gonna come to your home uh, from tactile, make sure everything's working out all right. When do you tell them to come back for you to evaluate them, the effect of what uh, what you've done, and um, what do you say should be their commitment? Is it lifelong? Is it six months? Is it a year? Um, I usually see them three to four weeks after they have the device delivered. I um. I have a pretty good system with my folks in the city about, you know, getting the patients evaluated quickly and the patients are usually contacted within the day of, um, of me making the referral. I do mm -hmm. tell them that in general, it's a lifelong commitment in one way uh, or another, because I consider it to be a chronic lifelong uh, disease. So they, but I, but um, as was mentioned, you know, when they start to see some improvement, they're much more willing to hang in there and go the distance. You know, I think that in my previous uh, iteration before I started using these uh, devices, you lose a lot of these patients because you gave them compression and they were unsatisfied and they would, you know, not come back and not feel like there was any option for them. So I continue to see them on a regular basis. And uh, usually the first one is three or four weeks after they've tried the device. And I, I also will call them uh, the first week or so after these, they start using it to make sure that they're tolerating it well and doing it the right way. Yeah, and, and, I, and I think these people are looking, they're looking for help. They've been pushed around many times and, and no one's gotten the, them for the right type of therapy. So Mark, just to, to kind of finish up here, what, what makes you choose, say, the, the tactile flexi-touch device versus another device? And why have you moved really to, to using this? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. I, I think we have to look at differentiators and part of it is simply peer reviewed published data. Um, if you look at the data that in the um, 
uh, dollars put into research, uh, tactiles excelled above everybody else. And then when we start comparing pump to pump, uh, most of the other pumps are a higher pressure hold and squeeze, which does more channeling, which really has been uh, even published in journals where biopsies have been done to show that they're pushing fluid through extra vascular non-lymphatic channels. So if we're, if we're outside of the lymph lymphangion, we're not accessing the endothelial glycocalyx. And if we're not ac accessing the endothelial glycocalyx, we're not getting nitric oxide production, maximizing immune function. So I think channeling versus non-channeling, and we know with tactile because it's more MLD-like, it's more of a gentle manipulation. First, we're doing receptive decompression with the 12 minutes up in the waist, and then the legs kick in just like a therapist would do, and that's been validated over uh, many decades. So it's replicating um, what an MLD can do. We know the outcomes. And then uh, the third point is just what we're seeing with clinical outcomes. We're dealing with many wounds that are 200, 300 centimeters squared, venous hypertensive, flebal lymphedema. Steve Dean just published a paper that showed this is the most uh, common thing that's coming into Ohio State University. And um, we're seeing in impressive outcomes uh, in coordinate this with as a total package of care.